God. The first time I heard this word, I remembered it as a fashion style, and the super edgy little me fell in love with gothic fashion hard and fast. Then I heard my history teacher mentioning the goth destroying the Roman Empire, so the young me was confused, like these two goth shouldn't be the same goth. Right? Of course not. But curiosity remains. Are uh, this goth and this goth somehow related? Is the similarity of the name random or absolutely on purpose? Let's find out together in the journey through a thousand year history of goth. The first Goth were the Germanic people who were one of the factors for the downfall of the Western Roman Empire, bringing Europe the Dark Age or the Medieval period. Back then, there were two groups of Gothic tribes. First, the Goths who brought the Roman Empire down from their grace in 410. They were called Visigoths, or literally the West Goths, since they were the Goths who migrated to the West. They traded and worked as mercenaries for Roman Empire. Then they conquered Rome and ruled over the area that is now modern France, Spain, and Portugal. The second group, the Ostrogoth, or the East Goth, were invaded by the Huns. Later, with the lead of Theodoric the Great, Ostrogoth mainly governed modern Italy. Where the Goth originated is still a mystery. The most famous theory of their origin was recorded in Getica, written by Judanus during the 6th century, completed in 551. Trudanus was a Roman bureaucrat who claimed to be a descendant of Goth. He mentioned that the Goth originally migrated from Skansa, the area around the north of Black Sea or Poland. However, whether the record is reliable or not is still debatable. The Goth, despite being generalized as barbaric, were converted to Christianity around 376 to 390 before the fall of Rome. The main influence was from a man named Alphilas, a Cappadocian Greek who was captured by the Goths. He became missionary bishop for Constantinople in the Eastern Roman Empire and translated the Holy Gospel to the Germanic language, converting some Goths to Christianity. The reason I mention this is because many of you may associate the word God or Gothic with the medieval style cathedrals. Gothic art style began later during the 12th century France. However, the Gothic cathedral was not the direct influence of the Goth. It was rather developed from the Romanic style of the Normans or Vikings. Furthermore, people during the medieval didn't call their style Gothic. Instead, the name was coined hundreds of years later in the 16th century, the Renaissance period, by an Italian painter named Giorgio Vasari. You see, the Renaissance glorified scientific knowledge especially those of Greeks and Roman. Therefore, the Renaissance viewed the art from the Dark Age, the age with little to no scientific advancements, as barbaric. As a result, Vasari named the architectural style after the Germanic tribe who described the beloved Rome, the tribe that brought Europe the Dark Age. Here are the main characteristics of Gothic architecture. Tall skeletal structures supported by flying buttresses and tall pillars which are paired nicely with tall-shaped sculptures. Pointed arches influenced by Islamic architectures. The pointed arches join together and create rib walls. For the decoration, the majority is highly detailed and ornate. Most patterns are based on nature like leaves or flowers, and they often feature rose window, stained glass, and gargoyle statues in their cathedrals. What I like the most about the Gothic architecture is how clever they combine practicality and beauty together. Despite its tall structure, the building is well supported by flying buttresses and ribbed walls. The inside of these cathedrals can be quite dim, therefore with the large pointed arches and window, giant windows can be added. Besides, the stained glass could depict biblical stories and the pictures of the patrons. Lastly, the gargoyle statues are not there solely to scare visitors. They could help convey rainwater too. The first architecture considered to be Gothic is the Basilica of Saint Denis, built during 1134 to 1144 France. Apart from this, the Notre Dame, Westminster Abbey, 
and the Cologne Cathedral are also considered Gothic architecture. Gothic art style declined when people attempted to bring back the knowledge of Greek and Roman during the Renaissance period. However, after the declination, it was revived again in England during the 1740s. This new movement is called Neo-Gothic or Gothic Revival. Mainly because of the concern over industrialization, people began to yearn for something spiritual. And what else could be more fitting besides the art from the age rich in religious concepts like the medieval? The very first Gothic revival building is Strawberry Hill, the villa of Horace Walpole. This man, Horace Walpole, please remember his name, is also an important figure in Gothic literature history as he also wrote the first Gothic literature. We will talk about Gothic literature later in this video. But now, let's get back to our Gothic Revival buildings first. Gothic Revival architecture shares similar characteristics to the earlier Gothic style, such as pointed arches or windows, pinnacles, or a tracery and decoration. But this time, the Gothic style was not limited to places of significance like cathedrals only. The style could be found even in common places like universities, houses, hotels, or furniture like chairs and tables. My personal favourites of Gothic Revival architecture are the Palace of Westminster, as known as Houses of Parliament, St Pancras Railway Station, Washington National Cathedral, St Patrick's Cathedral, Tribune Tower, and Cathedral of Learning, and also the small house in the painting named American Gothic, as you may recognise the pointed window over there. Gothic Revival architecture was not the only prominent Gothic aspect during the 18th century. If you still remember, Horace Walpole, who owned the Strawberry Hill Villa, also wrote the first Gothic novel, The Castle of Otranto, in 1764. And the subtitle of the book is, you guess it, A Gothic Story. In this case, it was because the story was set in the medieval castle, Gothic style, rather than implying that it was about any barbaric tribes. Gothic literature was influenced by the preceding Romantic authors who valued emotions, both the positive and the negative. On the other hand, the main characteristics of Gothic literature are mystery and suspense, supernatural, horror, and emotional extremes, basically anything dark and macabre. After the castle of Otranto, many other well-known Gothic works were published, like Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, Bram Stoker's Dracula, and Gaston Leroux, the Phantom of the Opera. These Gothic novels were adapted to numerous versions of films and still inspired the modern media. Many vampire stories were based on Bram Stoker's Dracula, and mass-centered tropes are usually derived from Mary Shelley's Frankenstein and Stevenson's Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. There are still some Gothic authors in our modern day. The most prominent figure should be Anne Rice, may she rest in peace. She wrote many books in Gothic genre, for example, Interview with the Vampire and the Queen of the Dam. By the way, I have been enjoying Gothic literature lately, so I might make more videos on this topic in the future. If you also want to know more about Gothic novels, please do tell, so I can take that into consideration. The popularity of Gothic decline, again, before it was revived, like, again, during the late 1900s Europe as a musical movement, goth rock. Goth rock was a genre that deviated from the post-punk in the late 1900s. The most influential goth song is Bela Lugosi's Dead by Bauhaus in 1979, which was also considered the beginning of goth music, though this term, goth, was coined by John Sticky earlier in 1967 to describe The Doors, Jim Morrison's rock band. Goth rock was often described as melancholy, emotional and dark, since they were mostly inspired by the dark gothic literature. For artist fashion choices, they prefer dark coloured clothes, they may wear fishnets or black laces according to their own preferences. Other common fashion choices are spiky or dramatic hair, black lips and black eyeliners. 
The most important landmark for the Goth was the Bat Cave Club in London, which opened from 1982 to 1985, where many famous Goth bands had performed, such as Alien Six Feen, The Cure, Susie and the Banshees, Bauhaus, and Virgin Prunes. Goth music also influenced the subculture and fashion of the era. Likewise, people who were into the subculture often wore cemented dark and exotic hairstyles, pointed boots, tight back jeans, dark lipsticks and eyeliners, or other black outfits. Apart from the fashion worn by goth rock artists, there are other subtypes of goth fashion, for instance, suburb goth, romantic goth, and trad goth. Moreover, here are some additional stars inspired by goth. New goth, gothic lolita, and western goth. Despite its decline, even nowadays, in the year 2022, we can find gothic elements everywhere. We can find gothic filters on Instagram and TikTok. There is literally goth family in the Sims 4. Here's some goth girl from Tekken and Dunkaranpa game. Tim Burton's movie and Castlevania in Netflix and also as game cannot be more gothic. The term gothic academia, a subgenre of the latest trend, dark academia, exists. Plus, the gothic subculture is still alive on YouTube. Please allow me to introduce some of my favorites. The Lair Water, with wonderful songs and wonderful gothic homemaking series fitting for a binge over, like a really binge over his gothic homemaking series. Daryl Cohen, who creates music videos, in which the setting is mostly a gothic castle. Another favorite of mine is Nos Akana. Nosokana's neoclassical Dalwave songs are influenced by gothic literature and horror themes. So, are these goth and this goth related? I mean, kinda, yes. These two groups of people are not directly associated, but the similarity of their name is not completely arbitrary either. First, goth was the Germanic tribe who defeated Rome and was viewed as barbaric for people who glorified Greek and Roman culture, the Renaissance. Consequently, the term was used for describing an architectural style that was considered unsophisticated. But then after its decline and revival, this term was used for the art styles and literature that are associated with darkness, not necessarily barbaric anymore. Spiritual elements and supernationalism of Gothic revival and Gothic literature influenced Goth rock and Goths of culture in the following centuries. Was the first time you heard the word goth? Did you first know it as fashion, literature, or the Germanic tribes? And which is your favorite? Share with us in the comment section. I'm genuinely curious. But for now, take care, and I hope to see you again on the next journey.